let's start a reading vlog that I am just so excited for. I ended up picking up the first three books in the Dream Harbor series. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it and I heard also that as the series goes on the books get better. My friend actually recommended this to me because I am a lover of small town romances. I also love cozy reads and I heard there's also a bit of a mystery aspect in here and I'm a massive fan of cozy mysteries as well. So this sounds like a series I'm gonna love so I thought I would take you guys along with me. So if you don't know about the Dream Harbor series or haven't seen anything about them, which highly doubtful at this point. I will go through them now really quick. So the first one we have the Pumpkin Spice Cafe and these are all by Laurie Gilmore. So there is that one. These editions here have the gorgeous foiling on them. So there's that one. The second book is the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore and again with the gorgeous foiling. There is that one. And then the third book, which is The Christmas Tree Farm. And last but not least, and I know there's another one coming out soon, I believe. Let me see. I think it's The Strawberry Pancake House. Let me see. I know it's a Pancake House one. I don't know exactly the name of it. I am completely blanking, but there is another one coming out. So I figured I would sit down and read these three all at once with you guys. And I actually ended up picking up the Pumpkin Spice Cafe this morning. I am like, I literally just started this book. I went outside, I ran two miles this morning. If you guys are new here or you didn't see the video where I started exercising again, I used to be a runner. I ran a marathon and I ran a ton of half marathons and I'm trying to get back into it after having my second kiddo. And it has been, I don't wanna say difficult, but it was harder at first to get up and get started again. I feel like as with most things, you gotta create that habit. And so I went out and ran this morning, came back, showered, got ready for the day, and then I picked up this book and I am on chapter four, as you can see there. So I'm not very far in. So let me give you the general idea of the book and how I'm feeling so far. I love giving you guys my initial thoughts on the book. So we have Jeannie and I always want to call her Janine for some odd reason. It's Jeannie. And Jeannie in this book, her aunt has the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Her aunt has retired and gifted her this cafe. Now it was at like a perfect time because Jeannie wanted to get away from the career she was in because the CEO of the company she was working for, she was actually the assistant to the CEO. He ended up having a heart attack and passing away and it was a stress induced heart attack. And she was like, you know, I don't want to be in this life where it's very stressful and like kind of reevaluating her life after that event occurred. And I also love that in this one, we also see Jeannie not only reevaluating her career and like her lifestyle choices, but also her way of thinking. She is an overthinker. She is an over talker, over sharer, you know, all of that stuff. So she's like reevaluating everything and wanting to kind of reinvent herself. So this was the perfect opportunity to move to this small town and, you know, get started with this cafe and meet new people and all of that good stuff that I absolutely adore in books. So we have that going on. And Jeannie's aunt actually, when Jeannie first gets there, she is on a vacation and Jeannie is left with instructions, but not like written instructions where she has a very clear idea of what she needs to do. So she's kind of like lost and, you know, just kind of overwhelmed and all of that good stuff when you're starting out something new and you don't really know you know, the ins and outs and things like that. So we see Jeannie going through that. There's also a scare for Jeannie because she hears things outside. So she's having a really hard time sleeping and she doesn't know what it is. Well, one morning she gets up and she has a bat with her and she's going down and she is going to see what is making this noise. When she throws open this door with the bat, she sees a man and he is delivering pumpkins. I forget what they call them. Essentially, they are small pumpkins. 
Gouda? Gouda? I don't know. Gouda's a cheese. So <laughs> let me see. I can be, I am completely wrong. Gourds. Why did I say Gouda? I have cheese on my mind for some odd reason. Gourds. Okay. So he is delivering those and they end up making small talk and she was like, you know, I just keep hearing things and they're keeping me up at night. And he's like, you know, it could be a bunch of different things. And she's like, no, I think this place might be haunted. And he's like, I think you're way overthinking this. Like it could just be literally anything. There are a number of things that this could be. And you're like making the assumption that this place is haunted. Anyway, they get into small talk and the guy's name is Logan. So we see Jeannie and Logan and their small talk in their first meeting and he ends up coming in for a coffee and he's like, I don't normally do this. You get to see both their points of view, but it is third person. But you get to see also Logan basically being like, I don't do this. I like getting my work done. And the the fact that I'm sitting here having coffee and she's making me a coffee and like not necessarily having coffee but she's making me a coffee and I'm not still going on with my morning routine is very unusual for me and like I just find myself sitting here and essentially talking to this woman anyway he's like you know if you think you're having a problem with something outside making noise that's keeping you up at night that's really worrying you why don't you come to the town meeting and that's essentially where i got they're at the town meeting we are meeting side characters in here which i'm really enjoying i'm really enjoying seeing the town there's a little book club that has a lot of gossip surrounding it we also meet hazel which is hazel is i actually underline this because i didn't want to forget hazel runs the bookstore next to the cafe which is the cinnamon bun bookstore and then we also meet a woman named Annie, and Annie is the owner of Sugar Plum Bakery. But I was, I was like, Sugar Plum Bakery, because in the map in the front here, I was a little confused because the bakery in the front is called the Gingerbread Bakery. So I don't know if that's going to change as the story goes on, because... I don't I, I'm I don't know why I'm trying to show you it but it does say sugar plum bakery whereas the map says the gingerbread bakery so I don't know what's going on there I'm curious to see what goes on there but I am enjoying it what I have to say about it is when I got into the first couple chapters like the first two chapters I was like mm, I don't know if this writing style is going to be my thing I felt like it just took I don't know, like two or three chapters to get into the writing style. Like I feel like I'm just getting used to it. So there is a warning about that. It does, I don't know, there's something about it that just has this cozy feel to it now that I'm really enjoying now that I got just a little bit further in. I'm not too far. So those are my initial thoughts and feelings. So we are gonna dive back into this. This morning, I went out with the kids on our daily walk. And later today, I think I will be taking them to Sesame Place for the Halloween parade at night. So that's, I think, what we're going to end up doing. Dave is working late, so it would just be me taking them. My mom was supposed to go, but my mom now has to get her hair cut because my aunt who does her hair is going away. So we shall see if we end up doing that. I'm a little hesitant only because Grace is used to going on the rides when we're at Sesame Place. We do have season passes, so we go often. So she's used to going on the rides, whereas I would just be taking them to the parade because I have the two little ones instead of just her. So we shall see. I'm nervous, but I think I just need to do it and take her. The last time we went, we went two weeks ago. And she loves the parade. She enjoys them so, so much. And that is what makes me want to go tonight. She just, she loves Sesame Place. She loves Bert and Ernie. She's actually being Ernie for Halloween. And the little guy is going to be Bert. And their costumes are absolutely amazing. And she put her costume on yesterday just to try it on because we got them. And I will insert a little picture. And she just kept saying, I love my Ernie shirt. I love my Ernie shirt. And it's like a full one piece, but that's all she kept saying. And she was so excited and she was trying to talk like Ernie and she's just obsessed. And the last time we went to the parade, she cried when she saw Bert and Ernie. So just knowing how excited it makes her, I, I'm almost 100% that we are going to go tonight. So anyway, with all that being said, now that the kids are down, I am going to jump back into this and then... I plan to read when we get home later tonight as well, so you guys will see me continue to pick this one up. But let's continue on reading and we will be back here for updates and all of that good stuff.
Alrighty guys, it is the next day, so it's time for a little update on the Pumpkin Spice Cafe and everything going on. So, I spent some time giving you guys updates as far as like my first initial thoughts, feelings, and impressions yesterday. I said the kids were down for a nap and we were probably going to go to Sesame, which we did not end up doing because while Grace was laying down, she did not nap and as soon as I was done recording and I sat down to read, she popped up and... She didn't nap. She was completely overtired. She, you know how they get this silliness to kids like when they're completely overtired there's this silliness and then they get into things they're not supposed to be getting into and like trying to, it's just, it was a lot. It was a lot to deal with and I didn't want to try to take that on on my own. And Dave actually did end up coming home earlier than expected so that was nice. We went for a little walk at night but we didn't end up going because the parade was at 7 and it's just too late for her already being overtired and all of that good stuff. Anyway, today we started the day off with our daily walk like you guys saw and then we ended up coming home and having lunch and this morning just went really fast. We had lunch, the kids actually went down for a nap today, both of them. So I got to reading. This is all I have left of the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. I am on page 291. And this is such a fast read. It is so fast. It is just fast paced. It keeps me intrigued and I love that about it. But the cozy fall vibes are just so here and I can see why people really enjoy this book. But let's get into it a little bit because I have some thoughts and feelings. So some things I really do love about this book. I love the characters. I love the friendships that are forming. I just love the whole vibe of this small town. It's absolutely amazing. And the, like I said, the friendships that are forming are great. I love them. I love, you know, just the dialogue between the characters and everything like that. I also love the small town and the close-knit community and that kind of goes along with the friendship as well. But you get to see that so much in this book and I really, really appreciate that. Another thing I absolutely love is that I love when we get to see inside Jeannie and Logan's heads, like their inner monologue. I love seeing that. I think it's very funny. There is humor in here. I found myself actually laughing out loud. So there's that aspect to the book as well. I'm really enjoying that. Some things I'm not loving so much. I feel like this is lacking depth as far as the characters go. While I love the characters, I feel like this is just kind of surface level. It was very much insta-lovey, like more physical attraction than anything, if that makes sense. And I don't love that in books. Another thing that I don't absolutely love is I feel like this book is just very repetitive. And there are just some things that like keep coming up that I feel like don't need to be coming up as often as they are. And I don't know, there is that repetitive nature to this book. So if that is something that bothers you, just know it is in here. And another thing I wanted to say, which I don't know, the writing is just not great. And like I said in the beginning, I was having a hard time gauging if I would be into this writing style, if I would like it. I do have to say it is not the best, but I still am enjoying it. Obviously, I'm getting through it this quick. I am enjoying it. It's fast paced, but I don't, there are just, I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of like the words that are used in here in other books and like, I don't know. It's silly. It's, it's a very lighthearted read. So just know that going into it as well. The writing is not phenomenal. I'm also kind of like, how did this get so much hype? Like there is so much hype surrounding this book and it was published quite a little while ago. Not a very long time, but it's not a new release is kind of what I mean. So the fact that this popped back up and has the hype it does, I'm kind of a little shocked about. I'm going to be honest. And that's not saying I'm not enjoying this book because obviously I'm getting through it so fast. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this small town. I'm looking forward to finishing this book up and continuing on with this series. Would I say this is an all-time favorite read? No. Would I say that I'm just enjoying it for the vibes and the... I don't know, quirkiness? I am. I am loving it. I'm loving the coziness of it. I'm loving all the fall vibes. Like I said, I love small town and the small town in this is just absolutely amazing. So 
want to give you guys a quick update before I finish this up. I do also want to say that I am liking Jeannie and Logan's relationship. I'm liking where it's going but I'm also like it, it like I said it feels surface level and then Logan also had something go on in the past that's kind of keeping him more reserved and not like fully embracing the relationship and what it could be and then we also just ran into a little miscommunication in here and it's not even necessarily miscommunication as it is him assuming and not taking her word for something but that is a little frustrating as well so wanted to give you guys an update before I finish this off later today I will be finishing this tonight so that I can start where is it the cinnamon bun bookstore in the morning tomorrow and I have heard this series just gets better as the books continue on going so I'm excited to give you guys an update on my thoughts and feelings at the end of this and then start the second book tomorrow so I will see you guys later today maybe as I'm reading this or when I finish this up so we will chat then guys I just got done my run as you could see when I first got outside this morning it was completely pitch black which I am not used to usually there's at least a bit of you know light or something luckily we have a lot of street lights around our neighborhood you can see the sun is starting to come up let me turn you around because the moon is still out and the sun is starting to come up let me show you real quick so there is the moon and then you can see the sun slowly starting to come up here but anyway as the moon is still out and the sun is coming up i am heading home and i am going to take my rehydrate that is something guys i haven't mentioned is like what i take before and after i run i take my rehydrate i've been taking this for almost 10 years now which seems absolutely crazy but when I find something that works I just don't switch up my routine so anyway I will take that that is a rehydration supplement obviously um I will take that I will eat and I will go shower I did finish up the pumpkin spice cafe at Barnes and Noble yesterday so I will give you guys an update on that once I am ready for the day I liked it but I have some things that I want to share so stick around for that but i will see you guys soon when i am ready to give you that update and we are ready to also jump into the cinnamon bun bookstore Alrighty guys, it is time for me to give you my final update on the Pumpkin Spice Cafe before we jump into book two, which is the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. My thoughts have stayed the same. I still love the town and characters. I still love all of the vibes of the book, but I still feel like it really lacked the depth even as we got more into the book. I don't know. There was just something missing there. I was not fully convinced. I don't want to say I wasn't fully convinced of the relationship, but it seemed very surface level. So with that being said, I also wanted to mention, I know I mentioned it before, but I feel like there was little discrepancies. So like I said, in the map in the beginning here, it says... The bakery is called the Gingerbread Bakery, but then her friend is introduced as owning the Sugar Plum Bakery. So I don't know what's going on there. Obviously, I don't know. There, there's something, maybe it changes its name eventually. I'm not sure. 
but also her friend Hazel who owns the bookstore it's obviously called the cinnamon bun bookstore that's how it's labeled on the map here and obviously that is the name of book two and in the beginning here it also mentions it's like bluebell bookstore or something so like I don't know what's going on there I, I, I'm not quite sure but we will see I guess we'll see if the cinnamon bun bookstore if the name changes uh if like, there's like you know it starts off as the bluebell bookstore and then changes to the cinnamon bun bookstore we will read and find out i'm not sure what's going on there but i did want to mention that as well so if you are going into this you know if that is kind of there but still an enjoyable read i kind of debated going back and forth on giving this three stars or 3.5 stars because when I say I like the town and I love the characters I truly do I am so excited to jump into Hazel and Noah's book in the cinnamon bun bookstore but it was just like I said it was lacking so I don't know I'm going back between three and 3.5 so we're just going to meet in the middle at 3.25 this is a 3.25 and it's I don't know we're going to stick with 3.25. I did do some, you guys know I've been really in my annotating phase. I did do some highlighting in the beginning and some underlining, but I didn't annotate the rest of the book. I did underline a few little things at the end, but overall I didn't feel the need to annotate this book. I'm also trying to gauge when to and when not to annotate, and I feel like that's been really hard for me. This one I'm kind of glad I only did like small highlights and underlines because there was no need for me to really annotate this book. By the way, I know people say there's a mystery aspect to this book. It's not a mystery. It truly is not a mystery. The character that did this really stood out to me as the person who was doing it the entire time. Maybe if you don't read mysteries at all or... I don't know. I thought it was very blatantly obvious who was doing this this whole time. And I like that there was also a surprise towards the end. But like, the mystery that's going on here, it's 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 not really a mystery. So I wanted to throw that out there as well. Where I was going with this. Oh, annotation. I'm trying to decide when to and when not to annotate books. And it's been really difficult for me. I have like annotated at the beginning of some books and then completely stopped. And I don't know. So we will see about the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore if I feel like annotating or like if I get the urge to annotate, we will see. But I am really excited to jump into that book because like I said, Hazel and Noah are our characters and we get introduced to them in this book, obviously. And just the start of the relationship in this book already has me so intrigued as to where it's going to go. So this was, like I said, 3.25. We're going to stick with that. Let's jump on into the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. I have to go up and grab it and let's start reading. Alrighty guys, it is the next day. I did not get to come on here and tell you my first thoughts, feelings, opinions about the initial portion of the book because I am 50% of the way through at this point. Dave's uncles were here yesterday for the football game and I was just reading away and got carried away in my reading, but I know I told you guys that I heard these books get better as they go. I am still waiting. I am waiting for it to get better. For those who thought book one was spicy, this one is on another level. So if that was too much for you, just know that going into this one or, you know, to not pick this one up. But with this one, I, oh, I wanted to clarify something too before I get into my thoughts, feelings. It does tell you in the beginning here, I know I told you guys that I was confused because it says the, um, I think it was the Bluebell bookstore earlier in book one. It does say that the owner does change the name of the bookstore. So clearing that up right away. But my thoughts on this one, I was so excited to jump into Hazel and Noah's relationship because in book one, 
I loved the descriptions. I loved how they were acting. I just loved every bit of it. But then when I dove into this one, I was like, I don't know. It, it, I was excited from the details in book one, but this one, it's just okay. Again, this is very surface level. I feel like we're not hitting anything all too deep. I feel like the physical attraction trumps everything else again in this book and it's not that's not something I love and then on top of that I love what's going on here obviously Hazel I don't know if I said Hazel owns the bookstore before but she doesn't own it somebody else owns it and obviously changed the name and she the owner comes around every quarter but Hazel is the manager so she's the one they are running this bookstore the entire time while the owner is you know off doing her own thing Anyway, with this one, we have Hazel and we get to see her in the environment in the bookstore. We get to see someone is leaving her little clues or little adventures in books. In the beginning, she is grappling with, she is turning 30 and she feels like she didn't get to really truly like live her 20s. So she is going through that and kind of has a little bit of regret of not doing things people normally do in their 20s and you know, being just this like calm person who reads books all the time and stays in and all of that good stuff. So she is going through that in the beginning of this book. Now, someone is leaving books in the bookstore that are like crooked or like out of line or upside down. And all of these books have a dog eared page with something highlighted on the page. These clues are left for her and she is going to essentially do what these clues say because the first one, it does hint at an adventure and that was exactly what Hazel was thinking. She needed adventure in her life. So she was like, I'm gonna do these, you know, clues that are left for me in these books. She does not know who is leaving these clues. And then Noah actually, is someone who in the first book we see him come into the bookstore often and buy books just to you know be around Hazel and you know just have interactions with Hazel and we get to see that in this book as well. Well one day they have an interaction and they decide that you know Noah and Hazel are going to do these little adventures together and that is where this book starts off. Hazel knows that Noah is a guy who usually gets with a lot of girls. You know he usually attracts the tourists of the town and like you know, has like one night stands or, you know, that kind of thing. So Hazel knows not to get too invested with Noah because he is known for that. And also Noah is one person in town who could just like technically up and leave whenever he wanted. So she doesn't want to get too invested. And also Noah knows going into this that, you know, Hazel just wants to do this because she's turning 30 and she just wants to have an adventure. And, you know, obviously things turn very physical and, yeah, that is where we are. But again, I feel like the relationship is very surface level. And I don't know, I, I like the first book for the I like the first book. Okay, I did like the first book. I enjoyed the first book. But I love that there was the small town incorporated in there. There was the friendships incorporated in there, you got to see more of the small town and friendships. Whereas this one, we are just essentially following Hazel and Noah. And while I normally love that in my romance books, I feel like the vibes I was loving from the first book aren't necessarily in this one because of the, I don't know, not having the small town or you do still get glimpses of them, don't get me wrong, and you get glimpses of the other characters, but it's just not as much as the first book. And I feel like that's what I was really like vibing with in the first book. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense. But those were my first thoughts, feelings and impressions. Obviously, I'm 50% of the way through. So not necessarily first impressions. But I'm curious to see where this continues on going. So there is the cinnamon bun bookstore so far. Let's jump on in this morning. I do really want to finish this book up today. So I'm going to start it again this morning and then we will see. Me and the kids will probably go for our walk and then I will probably pick this up again when they nap so I can finish this up. But let's get going and let's see if we can finish this book up today.
Alrighty guys, so we are here with the final update for the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. I obviously read the rest of this book between this morning and then when the kids went down for their nap, they are still down for their nap. And I did not enjoy this one more than the first one. If you are looking specifically for spice, this might be your book, but like the relationship depth was still not there. The writing, while better in this book, I still felt like the writing wasn't great. Um, I don't know, guys. I also felt like there was just a lack of showing the small town more in this one. Like, I really loved, like I said, the small town and the friendship vibes in the first one compared to this one where this one had a lot less of it. And another thing I wanted to mention, like, I feel like this cover just gives fall vibes, whereas this book is more summer oriented. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I still didn't really enjoy it. Obviously, I, I don't want to say I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't a bad book. As you can tell, I read these books really quickly. I read them really fast. I'm always intrigued to see where they go, but it's not one I would say go out of your way to pick up. But I, I, if you're looking for a cozy, spicy book, maybe pick this one up. But it's not one now, like after reading it, that I would go back and reread. But there were really cute things in this. Like I love a good romance that has like a good bookish theme to it. And I did also want to say that I thought the premise of this was just absolutely amazing, but I thought it was executed not great. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And there were points in it where like there was one really cute point in here and I did like a little annotation on it and it was really cute and I really enjoyed like little parts of the book. But as far as like the whole thing goes, I don't know. I'm going to go with three stars for this one. I also kind of debated on 2.75, but I'm getting through them so quick and I do stay intrigued. So maybe the three is where it really belongs, but I'm just kind of let down and disappointed because I just had higher expectations, especially how Hazel and Noah were written at the end of the first book. So I don't know. I loved the bookish undertone that this had. Obviously, she works in the bookstore and Noah was going in and reading books and, you know, you get to see them read together and things like that. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. But I just felt like there's so much lack of depth. And let me tell you, if you are someone who does not like miscommunication like me, this will drive you nuts. There is so much miscommunication that a simple conversation could have fixed so many times. So that was also in here. I am done with this one. We are going to continue on to the Christmas tree farm, which I have to run upstairs and grab. I'm not going to jump into that just yet because I have, I did two loads of laundry this morning. I have another two to do. Mondays are like my laundry days. So I have that to do, but I am going to run upstairs and grab the Christmas tree farm. I am curious to see how this one goes because I know our main female character in here just moved to Dream Harbor and I'm curious to see what's going on there and you know you get a little glimpse of her a very very tiny glimpse of her in the cinnamon bun bookstore but I'm curious to see where this goes and how it plays out and I'm hoping this one does get better because everyone said they get better as they go. So we shall see. But I'm going to run up and grab that. I do think I might go out tonight to get some quiet reading time at Barnes. So we'll see what goes on there. But I'm going to go get the Christmas tree farm now and bring it downstairs and then we shall see when I end up picking it up. But as soon as I do, obviously you guys will come along with me and I can't wait to tell you guys what I think about that one. Alrighty guys, it is time for an update. It is the next morning. I went outside. It is 
just about six o'clock here. I went outside, did two miles this morning, showered, and then I figured I would give you guys an update. I know you guys saw me start the Christmas tree farm yesterday at Barnes. And people keep saying these books get better, but this one already I am very indifferent about. I am only on chapter four, as you can see here. And we have our main female character who is Kira. And she obviously now owns the Christmas tree farm. She is someone who, she's always had people do everything for her. She's never really had to do anything for herself. She was also very attached to her sister who is no longer by her side. Her sister has found her soulmate and is, you know, somewhere else. So Kira is on her own. She made this decision on her own. She is someone who makes these kinds of decisions like her sister is the one who like thinks everything through and is very like analytical and realistic and things like that and she is just you know someone who goes off on a whim and has had everybody essentially do everything for her doesn't know necessarily how to cook or you know all of that good stuff. So that is Kira. Kira is also very insufferable. She is someone who hates Christmas. She is someone who comes off like she doesn't like other people. She's very rude. She seems to only like dogs so far. And I'm just, I don't know. I don't like her rudeness. I don't like her as a character. Her inner monologue doesn't match what she says on the outside. I get she's trying to scare people off, but it's just like, you're, you're being a little too much. She also overreacts. Anyway. Our male main character in this one is Bennett, who is Jeannie's brother, and I was really curious to see him in the story. I'm liking him so far, but like I said, I just can't get over Kira. Bennett is in here. He's on vacation. He's trying to, you know, have some time to relax in this small town, and I don't want to give anything else away with Jeannie and her relationship. And Jeannie, by the way, guys, I continue to, <laughs> in my head for some odd reason, she's always Janine. I don't know why it's Jeannie trying to get that to stick in my head. But anyway, we have Bennett and I really like Bennett. I really like seeing the small town. You do get to see more of the small town in this one again. We, you know, go to a town meeting in the beginning here and you know, all of that good stuff. We also get some background on the Christmas tree farm and that is where the mystery lays in this one. So the old owner of the Christmas tree farm, people know him to be scary and you know, his wife just kind of didn't show up again one day and before he passed away, he left a note in the house that a cousin found and it said that he had buried something precious on the grounds of the Christmas tree farm and the town essentially wants to figure out what it is but the cousin would never let anybody on the property but obviously the cousin had sold the property to Kira and they want someone to go and essentially you know just kind of like snoop around almost and kind of like help Kira out and check on her and things like that. I don't know long-winded explanation but that is the mystery aspect of this book so I'm curious also I was kind of curious because they said the cousin wouldn't let anyone in the town like on the premises or like search around or like you know do any snooping or anything but the cousin also sold it to Kira so I don't know what's going on there anyway I am thinking about putting this down. I am not quite sure yet. You guys know I have a lot of books on my TBR to go into something and not be enjoying it. So I'm going to get a little bit further. I'm only 11% of the way through. So I'm going to, I'm going to suck it up for now. <laughs> I know it sounds terrible and it sounds like I'm being over dramatic, but like I just can't stand Kira and she's just insufferable for me. And what I was going to say about her overreacting, Bennett tells her something and she completely overreacts to what he tells her. And it's just like, was that really necessary? Like everything she does kind of annoys me in a way. So I'm going to continue on reading and see how I feel after reading a little bit more, see if I'm actually going to DNF or if it actually starts to get enjoyable. So come along with me as I continue on reading. I also do want to say the writing in this one is also just, the writing is not great in these. So I am a little confused as to why these are as hyped. So anyway, let's jump on in and see if I will continue or if I will end up putting this one down. And I'm so upset because look how absolutely stunning these covers are. The covers are gorgeous. So anyway, 
let's jump on in. I keep putting it off. We need to jump on in and see what's going on here and my feelings and if I'm going to put this book down or continue on reading. Alrighty guys, we are here for an update on the Christmas tree farm. I did get a little bit further into it. I am on chapter 10, page 112. I am still not enjoying this book and I don't like Kira's character. I... It's just not been an enjoyable read for me. It's not one that I'm like, oh, you know, like, I'm excited to continue with. It's one that I keep, like, stopping and debating on putting down and then, you know, doing the same thing all over again every single chapter I'm done. And part of me feels terrible because I read the other two books in this series already. So I'm like, this is the third book. I might as well just finish it. Like, I am already over 100 pages in. Like, let's just finish this up. Let's get on with it. But I shouldn't be also pushing myself to finish the book. And I did say like one of my goals this year was to allow myself to DNF more because I do have so many books I want to read. And when I'm reading, I want to obviously enjoy those books. And for this one, it's just not working. Like I said, I don't love Kira's character. She is rude. She is cringeworthy. And I just don't enjoy it. She... Like the last chapter I read, she got to better, like as far as rudeness goes with the Bennett, but still it's just like, okay, now you're switching out of nowhere. You have no reason to like turn gears with him. Like it, it, it just feels so out of place in a way. And I'm just like almost completely, I, I am done with this book. <laughs> I am going to end up DNFing this book. Another thing that really irks me about this one is like Bennett's inner thoughts like she is just being so rude and like I get he wants to help her out he feels bad for her he's just that type of guy where he does things because he feels bad for people and like he wants to fix things and things like that I understand that but if someone's treating you like this like and the thoughts he's having like the inner monologue he's having in his head I'm just like where is this coming from and like I have so many Christmas reads I want to get to and I want my Christmas reads to not that this doesn't feel Christmassy but I want the joy of the Christmas I want just I don't know this is guys it's just not cutting it for me and so I am going to put it down as bad as I feel I read the other two books in the series and as bad as I feel because I also want to read Annie and Max story and I don't know, the next one coming out is what? It's called the Strawberry, hold on, it's the beginning here. Strawberry Patch Pump, I was going to say Pumpkin House. Strawberry Patch Pancake House. Now, I didn't look at the synopsis or anything, but I really want to read Annie and Max's story. And I feel weird. You guys know I'm a series reader. I like, I... I have to read series in order. As you can tell, I'm just like fumbling with my words because I am just so devastated about putting this one down. But at the same time, I'm not. I really want to put it down. But like, I want to continue on with the series when the next book comes out. But I feel like it's like incomplete. If I don't finish this one, I, I know I'm in my head. I'm like that. I don't know why it bothers me so much, but it just does. But also like the other two books. So the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, I gave 3.25 stars. Three stars for the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. This one obviously is the DNF, but like after DNFing, I feel like I can't continue on with the series and I know it is in my head. I know it's a me thing. I know I need to get over it, but like this just isn't working for me. It's not working and I need to get over that and I need to put it down and I need to pick up something else that I'm actually going to enjoy. But I wanted to give you guys that update on where I am with the story, how I'm feeling, DNF. And I was actually looking at reviews. Do you guys do this too? I looked at reviews as I was contemplating DNFing. Like I looked at, you know, the not great reviews and I looked at the great reviews and the great reviews are like, oh, the series went better as it like went. And I'm like, totally don't agree with you there. But then I was looking at the other reviews, like the one stars, the two stars, the three stars. And they're like, you know, this wasn't my favorite book in the series. Like this was my least favorite or like it's very cringeworthy. And like they had all of the kind of same feelings that I was having towards it. So 
There are people out there that have the same opinion as me, but it is definitely the minority of people, but it is okay. I'm gonna DNF this one, and when Annie and Max Story comes out, I will pick that one up, but it's just, just I'm so disappointed. I am so disappointed, but anyway. That wraps up what is out of the Dream Harbor series so far. I know a lot of people are really, really loving these books. So if you are one of those, I hope this doesn't discourage you. If you haven't picked them up yet and you really want to, I hope this doesn't discourage you either. I'm just sharing my thoughts, feelings, and opinions about them, but a lot of people really, really enjoy them. So do not let that discourage you from picking up these books. Will I pick up the next one? Probably. Should I? Probably not because three stars aren't the best books. Like I'm not having a phenomenal time reading them, but at the same time I am intrigued. So we shall see. I don't know. I I'm like all hands in the air with this series at this point. <laughs> so like I said, that wraps up the Dream Harbor series. If you guys read this, please let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions down below. I'm so curious to see what your thoughts were because like I said, sometimes I just have very unpopular opinions and this is definitely one of them. So that is it for the video. I am sorry if I disappointed anyone by DNFing this one. It's just this is not the Christmas book for me. But that wraps it up. Thank you guys for sticking with me for this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed. This is my first reading vlog in a very, very long time, but I'm hoping to do so many more of them. But thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give it that thumbs up. And if you want to stick around for more bookish related videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would absolutely love to have you. Thank you guys again. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. And I will see you guys soon.